Entrepreneurial Edge is brought to you by Business Banking from FNB. Because small ideas can lead to big business. FNB, how can we help you? Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Edge. I'm Chris Bishop. Now, there's a school of thought that says people who leave their country for another often make good entrepreneurs. It is something to do with making a new start and also that survival instinct created by being an outsider in a country that's not entirely yours. Look at shipping magnet Aristotle Anassis, once the world's richest man, born in Turkey of Greek parents who made his money in Argentina. Or Mohammed El Fayed, born and bred in Egypt, who made a fortune in England. In this edition, we have the story of Jerome Cohen, who came here to South Africa from Paris to import French perfume and is now sitting on top of a prosperous marketing company, Off Limits. Let's take a quick look at what it does. Prior to 2004, we mainly, um, Chapel Jerome mainly brought out international artists and did big scale productions to Dreamscapes uh, for big clients. And in 2004, uh, we teamed up with uh, actually Lisa, who's another partner, and actually decided and started to form an agency. So back then, we were doing much smaller activations, and probably three, four years ago, we were actually turned into a below the line agency with proper processes, uh, proper clients, and obviously, we grew and had more staff. Well, Off Limit at the moment is a full uh, 360 degree below the line agency. So what we do is we start, we have very strong strategy in-house. So a lot of the below, below the line agencies don't have this. We've got a very strong creative department. So from strategy and insights, we do lots of creative and come up with good ideas and then also are able to implement them in activations, events um, or campaigns. It's important for businesses to obviously spend their marketing budget wisely. Um, firstly, doing um, below the line activity. So that's actually engaging with clients. So one-on-one, -on -one, the people on the street are your brand. So it's super important for people to be actually engaging one-on-one, -on -one, not just TV or radio, as this is the real impact that it has on brands. At the moment, we're just growing from strength to strength. In the last year, we've done many big pictures, pitches for, a, for um, big clients, and we've actually won all or 90% of them. So last year acquiring Coca-Cola and this year, um, actually in the last two days, we just received information that we've become the below the line agency for MTN as well. I think Jerome being European and his flair and a go-getter, um, never being scared of anything, always persevering and you know making sure things get done. Um, I think we are an organization that works very differently it's like Jerome is managing director, but you'll find him on the streets, activations, checking up on people. Um, so I think he's on the ground and his street credibility and wanting to be involved makes him a great entrepreneur. In the studio, I have Jerome Cohen, the founder of Off Limit Communications. Now, Jerome, you say you don't quite agree that if you're an outsider in a country, you always make it as an entrepreneur. What do you think? No, not quite, because when, when you arrive in a new country, you arrive in new territory, you don't know nobody, you don't even know how to move around, so you've got, you've got to build a foundation from start, which is in a, obviously in a, from your own country. You, you start creating a relationship, a network, right from, from, this, you know, from the time you, you know, you're at school. So what brought you to South <coughs> Africa? Just tell us about your first day in Africa all those years ago. My first day? <laughs> Actually, it was it was quite it was quite strange. I don't know if you know that um, Mother City uh, project story in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. So I arrived from Paris, and my cousin was already uh, Stefan was already in uh, in South Africa, and uh, I land and I've absolutely usually I was very lucky to travel quite a lot, you know, around the world before coming to South Africa, and usually I. I like to know where I'm going. And so on in this case, I knew that I'm going to be staying in South Africa for a very long time. So I thought, OK, let me just get there and discover what, what South Africa is about. And I arrived in Cape Town. I had no idea. So when you arrive in Cape Town for the first time, with this kind of preconceived idea you've got about Africa, because I went to Kenya and place like that, it was just very much like, wow, OK. And then the, first, the same night, it took me to that, to that party. And I <laughs> was with four or 5,000 people. That was all, uh, you know, it was a costume party, um, completely out there. I was like, okay, this is, <laughs> this is it for not me. what I was expecting. And from then on, we, uh, we after moved to Johannesburg and, and start, um, you know, creating something 
uh, the best way possible. Let's just talk a little bit more about your family <coughs> because you come from uh, two generations of entrepreneurs. Let's yeah. just take it back to your grandfather. Well, actually, pretty much within my family was, um, was entrepreneurs, really, because it started with my grandfather was, uh, was making suit, he was a teller um, in, in Algeria. So then all the, um, you know, the family arrived, my father's um, and his, uh, his brothers, um, in, <coughs> in Paris around the age of you know, 14, 16. And they all went to di different ways, but they all basically, in their own right, uh, were entrepreneurs. And then your father, he was also a big time entrepreneur. Yeah, he started as an accountant and then moved into the, the, the more the business of, uh, you know, of producing. Um, having manufacturing of cosmetics and things like that. Yeah. And you say cosmetics and perfumes. You say yeah. that he he uh, supplied people like Chanel and these big. Yeah, he was a subcontractor. He was he was manufacturing for all the big brands, basically. And in some ways, that was how you came into business in this country because you were importing French perfume when you first came. Yes, yeah, so I got I got obviously some kind of experience within the field because I grew up within that within that environment, and. Um, that was the first, you know, our first business that we did, my cousin and I, where we brought um, in South Africa a container of perfume, and we went for the, you know, for the lower, lower market, low cost perfume, sort of like imitation without really being an imitation. And uh, then we brought the perfume into separate elements. We manufactured it um, in, you know, uh, in the country, and then we sold it to diverse cash and carries, and you know, and wholesalers until the time where, where we got into Jumbo Cash and Carry and two years down the line there was a, a company that that put us out. Oh really? So it didn't end well then? You no, it went, it went very well. It went well? Yeah, because basically the, because the margin was w w were getting so small and we, uh, um, it was very difficult to compete with the Indian manufacturing of, you know, locally of, the, of those kind of copies. And we got booed out at the right time. So without even asking for it, so it was great. It was, it was, it was just very, it was just luck, really. And you sort of cashed in and No, it moved wasn't on. a huge cash yeah. in at all. It was a small organization. It was, was, it? It was really, um, you know, a way to start within, um, within the, the economy of South Africa at the time, which things were quite easy and quite, it was quite welcoming. It was a new energy. It was, um, it was really awesome. And what happened is that when I arrived in Johannesburg, I didn't know anybody, like literally, I knew one person. Um, so what I decided to do is to, because I did that in Paris, is to put on this sort of like party, sort of event uh, with a theme, getting some sponsors on board, doing a bit of marketing and doing it not for the money at all, mm. but doing it for sort of like integrate, a way of integration within the, within the, 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 the social life of Johannesburg at the time. So we did the first one, it was in 96, um, and it was small, but it was very successful and it really worked well, and straight from the beginning. And this was, was the birth of the company that you have now? Well, exactly. Yeah. We didn't have a clue that we were going into advertising, yeah. obviously, in 15 years ago. We, I, was up, I, I did that purely um, to be able to sort of like integrate ourselves within the community of Johannesburg and to, um, to create a bit of a life, you know what I mean? And to create a bit of excitement. And then the first one worked, then we went on to the second one. And step by step, we learned a new business and we grow until we, we started to, to bring international artists in the country. So that was very exciting. I mean, these early days, I mean, it was just you and your... And my cousin, my cousin. Ste Stefania. How, how humble were those beginnings when you started out? I mean Extremely humble. We went to um, that, you know, that bank. Anyway, we went there with, um, to open an account. To start with, we put 5,000 rand on the account. And that was it. Okay. And we were driving this um, Toyota Corolla, you know, those very old models, um, <laughs> the first, you know, the small Toyota Corolla, yeah. Was so there ever a moment when you thought, I grew <coughs> up in Paris, what am, I, what am I doing here in the middle of Africa? No, look, it was tough because, yeah, you grew up in an environment in the center of Paris, in a, in a, in a wealthy sort of environment. Um, you don't have to struggle really for, you know, in your, an upbringing. But that upbringing also sort of like pro programmed you to, it's almost like you, you don't even look at, um, 
at the possibility of not, not being successful or not succeeding. You know it's going to take time. You know that it's going to be challenging, but you've got you know you've you, you've got very set set goals, and uh, that's it. I mean, there's no there's no two ways about it, basically. And uh, this is one of the great questions. I mean, you come from two generations of entrepreneurs. Do you think entrepreneurs are born, or do you think they're made? <laughs> Look, you can't make any generality about anything. Um, in my personal case, I think um, I was neither born um, or made. It was just that because of the upbringing, I think it's very much related to the education more than anything else. I don't think you bo you, you're born one way or another. Obviously, uh, there's probably some genetic playing a, a role in it. I don't know, but uh, the reality is that it depends a lot on, on, your, on your upbringing. It doesn't matter if, uh, if you, um, wherever you're coming from, really. It's the education, I think, plays, plays a big role. And I presumably, you could have stayed in Paris and had a comfortable job and a comfortable life. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. What, what do you think gave you that to look for something a bit more or a little for in life? <laughs> look, it's, it's, it, it was trying to, to do the best at first with the situation that you're in, you know? And also uh, trying to, to create new challenges. I was, I was, I was used to, uh, I got used to travel a lot. Um, and it was it was very exciting to be, you know, in a new place. Um, you know, you look at South Africa pre-apartheid. Everybody was, you know, on, on TV. Everybody was like, you know, this is not happening. It's how does that possible? And then after you, you know, you get to a country that is free, and and obviously they, you know, there's going to be that energy, um, and that energy was a sort of an energy that you couldn't find anywhere else. In Paris. It you know, it's also beautiful and it's all great to go in Paris for holiday, but the reality is that people are, they're quite sad, you know, it's not, um, it's not happiness every day, yeah? it's the weather, the weather, just the weather alone is not, uh, it's not the best place to be from that point of view, but uh, otherwise people are struggling, you know. No, sure. Okay, Jerome Cohen, just <laughs> hold that thought there, we're going to talk a lot more about your business off limits in the second half.